Shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. And don't be your ten o'clock meeting. Sean Mercer. Yeah, I did. Josh says you have a fast car. If it's fast, I need to borrow it. I got this meeting to get to, or I am dead. Back in 1997, Volkswagen joined the retro car design craze by introducing a modern version of its oldest and most famous car, the Beetle. Calling the new car the New Beetle, and yes, new was part of the model name, the engine moved to the front, but the basic Beetle shape remained, dialing up the cuteness factor to 11. Although a slightly less cute version debuted in 2011 and dropped the new from its name, the public fascination had long since faded, leading to its cancellation by 2019. This is the story of the Volkswagen New Beetle. This is my old car. The 180 horsepower New Beetle Turbo S. You'd never suspect it. Although I've had some requests specifically to feature the New Beetle, I also had some that requested the Beetle, but I couldn't always tell if they meant the original or the new one. The original Beetle remained in production until 2003, although US sales ended in 1979. I'll talk a bit about the original here, but I may do a future episode dedicated to the original in a future episode. I also have gotten several requests to feature the Volkswagen Fox in a future episode. The new Volkswagen Fox is a lot of car for the money. But the new Beetle won my Patreon poll on which VW model to feature next. Most likely the next VW episode, after the new Beetle, will be the Fox. The name Volkswagen, before it became the name of what is now one of the largest automobile conglomerates in the world, to anyone in Germany, it simply meant people's car. Its purpose was to go against the establishment of what most cars had become in early 1930s Europe, being available only to the wealthy and elite. The idea of this mass-produced, inexpensive car came from the mind of Adolf Hitler, who hired Ferdinand Porsche to design it. That fact itself is ironic when you consider how the future played out, with Porsche heading a company devoted to making high-end sports cars, which the typical car buyer couldn't afford. Whereas the Volkswagen mark became known for more affordable and fuel-efficient cars. That quest for fuel efficiency would later almost bring the company to its knees, thanks to some not-so-honest methods of measuring said fuel efficiency. But that's a whole other story. The original Beetle, when production of civilian vehicles started up in Allied-occupied Germany after World War II, exports soon began to other European countries, and being the first Volkswagen, in some countries it was just known as that name alone, although Germany did market it as the Beetle or in German, the Käfer. My apologies to my German-speaking viewers if I butchered that pronunciation. Although the Beetle's rear-mounted air-cooled engine was far from typical in the late 40s, several other European cars adopted a similar design just 10 years later. Even GM tried to replicate the idea with its Chevrolet Corvair in 1959, although with not so successful results. When exports of the Beetle arrived in the US in the 1950s, it definitely clashed with the much larger chrome-laden American cars. But by the 1960s, their appeal to young drivers soared, not just because of their low cost, but it was also a way for young drivers to rebel against their parents. Its popularity had grown so much around the world that by the end of its run, 20 different manufacturing plants around the world had at one time built it. Out of sight, man. I wouldn't have believed it. Groovy, Pop. Groovy. But by the mid-70s, the now decades-old Beetle design was lagging far behind most any other car. Sales of the Beetle in the United States dropped by 50% between 1970 and 1976. And by 1977, the Beetle no longer could meet federal safety and emission standards, leading to its final sales year in the US and Canada by 1979. Sales also dropped worldwide, resulting in Mexico being the last country to sell them by 1988. The Beetle was still popular in Mexico well into the 90s, thanks in part to their popularity as taxi cabs and the U.S. Southwest would often still see them for many years after, since many of them regularly crossed the border. Hold it! Uh, no offense, kid. You can make some decisions. What are you doing? Damn. But when Mexico phased out two-door taxis and improved their own emission standards, the demand dropped so much that Volkswagen finally ended production in Mexico in 2003. But back in the early 90s, a replacement Beetle was in the works. The Beetle concept car which was simply called Concept One, and revealed in 1994 at Detroit's North American International Auto Show, definitely had a familiar shape. But it was based on the platform of the Volkswagen Polo, which at the time was starting its Mark III generation. Underneath the bodywork, which somehow managed, at least to me at the time, to simultaneously look retro and futuristic, the air-cooled engine in the rear, powering the rear wheels, 
had become a water-cooled engine in the front, powering the front wheels, with twice the power, and offered equipment that was unheard of in the old Beetle, like power windows and locks. Like most concept cars, I didn't expect the production car to maintain the same look, but when the production car arrived at the 1997 auto show, the hype and excitement was even crazier, as Volkswagen had managed to keep the same look for production, to be released later that year as a 1998 model. In production form, it also had its official name, the New Beetle. At the time, I didn't realize that the original Beetle was still in production in Mexico, so now it makes sense that they named the new one as, well, New. But it was a name that was guaranteed to eventually have to change, because eventually, the car won't be new anymore. And speaking of Mexico, that's where all US sold New Beetles were built, in the same plant which built the original. Although the Concept One's Polo platform shared several parts with the Volkswagen Golf Mark III, the production New Beetle would move entirely to the Golf Mark IV platform. Automakers typically don't like to brag about how one of their cars is sharing parts with another, but they make an exception if it makes the car sound more appealing. The Golf had established a decent fan base in the U.S., Thank you very much, Mr. especially after significant improvements were made following the Mark I, which was known in the U.S. as the Rabbit. Even the famous dashboard flower base made it from the concept to the production car, a more than subtle nod to the original Beetle being an integral part of the flower power generation of the 1960s. Although word of mouth probably helped a lot to advertise the new Beetle, Volkswagen didn't skimp on the TV ads, clearly trying to win over the Gen X market, despite the fact that the car itself was a caricature of what their baby boomer parents may have once owned. It also seemed to not take itself too seriously, which Volkswagen clearly got away with, at least in the short term. Although the base engine's power was nearly double of what the previous Beetle once had. 40. That sounds a lot less impressive when you consider just how slow the original car was. 41. Worldwide, over the course of its entire run, the new Beetle had no less than 18 engine variations. But in the US, it initially offered just three. Its base engine in the US was a two liter four cylinder, which only made 115 horsepower. Optional was a 1.9 liter turbo diesel, which only made 100 horsepower but it was a more fuel-efficient option, and was a decade before VW's infamous diesel cheating scandal, so VW had no problem promoting it back then. Performance-minded drivers could get a 1.8-liter gas turbo 4, available in both the turbo and sport models. Turbo, 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 turbo. For the 2000 model year, Volkswagen switched to the Los Angeles Auto Show to reveal its next new Beetle concept, which makes sense considering its name, the Dune. Meant to emulate, at least vaguely, the old VW Dune buggy, the concept was going to have all-wheel drive, revised bumpers with undercarriage protection, variable height suspension, a large removable sunroof, and a more off-road themed interior, but it never went beyond the concept stage. By 2002, a Turbo S model was introduced that bumped the horsepower to 180, along with a six-speed manual and revised front and rear fascias, bigger wheels and tires, and even a speed-activated retractable rear spoiler. But the bigger news came in 2003 with the arrival of the Cabriolet which was inevitable considering it was once offered on the original Beetle. That car's canvas top had to stack up above the engine when stowed, as there simply was no other place for it to go. With the new Beetle, they maintained the same look, which also helped maintain at least some trunk space. Ah! Stop! What happened? I've had enough! <laughs> In 2005, the new Beetle offered another concept at the Detroit Auto Show, this time with a Ragster, a name which was supposed to be a combination of Ragtop and Speedster. It was based on the production Cabriolet model, and it indeed was a ragtop, although the canvas top was more like a really big sunroof than a true convertible. Its flattened roofline showed the direction a Volkswagen was considering for a future redesign, a difficult task with any retro-style car, in that they would have to move the car more away from the original it was inspired from. But a new generation was still a few years off, so a mid-cycle refresh was done in 2006. This refresh also brought with it a new 2.5-liter inline five-cylinder, same as what the Jetta and Rabbit had then. And yes, the Rabbit name came back for a short time in the late 2000s. That engine would eventually become the only one offered in the US, which was not unexpected since annual sales of the new Beetle in the US had dropped to less than half of its peak in 1999. Part of that decline was attributed to, at least back then, to the car owner demographics. Huge car. <laughs> Although historically it's been a constant that interest in cars skews highly towards men. Uh, I don't want any trouble. I don't want any trouble either. And if you don't believe me, just look at my channel stats. You know you forgot to take your mask off, right? 
The new Beetle played against that tradition by a lot. Only around one in four buyers of the new Beetle were men. I suspect most of the men bought the turbo models, which did try to look a bit more aggressive, but considering the car's overall shape, there was only so much they could do. 2011 would be the last model year for the new Beetle, and its replacement for 2012 was renamed to just Beetle, which made sense and technically the correct name of New New Beetle probably wouldn't have gone over very well. The 2012 Beetle still had a similar shape to its predecessor, but it followed the idea first considered with the earlier Ragster concept, which flattened the roofline in an attempt to soften the previous car's somewhat cartoonish look. Its new platform was called the A5, not to be confused with the Audi A5, and it shared that platform with the Volkswagen Jetta, and was still built in the same Mexican factory. The flattened roof didn't hurt headroom much, with the overall height of the car surprisingly only decreasing by a half inch. The new look definitely improved sales, with the top sales year being 2013, with over 43,000 sold. But that was still only about half of what the new Beetle got in its best year of 1999. On the positive side, more men were buying it. Don't fret me, brother. Sticky bun comes soon. With the ratio moving from one in four to one in three buyers being male. But the overall decrease was likely caused by the same reason all cars like the Beetle eventually fall out of favor nowadays. It's not a crossover or SUV. Hey, Dave, you're from Minnesota, right? Yes, I. The land of 10,000 licks. But it still hung on until 2019, which to me, honestly, was longer than I thought it would last, as sales dropped off quickly after 2013. Don't be no cloud on a sunny day. Yeah, chill, Winston. Sir? I think if it wasn't for the iconic name, Volkswagen wouldn't have let it live even that long. The last Beetle rolled off the line on July 10, 2019, marking the official end of what is arguably the most iconic model name in car history. It's a sad day for us but we are very proud to have this car here. Officially, there were just three generations of the Beetle, with the second and third generations lasting a total of 22 years, which by itself is a long, healthy run for any car model. But when it's compared to the first gen, which lasted almost 60 years and sold over 21 million cars, it was a high bar to meet. Still, I suspect most young people today, when you ask them about the Volkswagen Beetle, if they even know what it is, will probably remember the new Beetle, since finding an original Beetle on the road today in the U.S. is a rare sight indeed. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, click the like button and subscribe to my channel. If you once owned a car from the 80s to mid-2000s that you rarely see today and would like it featured in a future episode, leave a reply in the comments or contact me at the email shown here. See you next time. They're coming! They're coming! I got an idea. Why don't you text them and ask them to stop chasing them? Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring today's episode. You can create your own website with Squarespace's powerful and beautiful online platform and connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated, members-only content. You can manage your members, send email communications, and leverage audience insights, all on one easy-to-use platform. And grow and engage your audience with Squarespace email campaigns. With Squarespace, you can create powerful email content that matches your website with your existing products, blog posts, and logo, so your messaging is consistent and effective. Squarespace websites are optimized for mobile, so your content automatically adjusts so your site looks great on any device. And you can use customizable galleries to display images and videos in unique ways. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, Go to squarespace.com slash myoldcar to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain.